Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be discussing the preliminary sizing of spread footings and giving you some background information on how that is done. So um, as we go through this video, I strongly suggest you write things down. Remember, this is not a spectator sport. Engineering, math, science, physics is very participatory. You need to participate and by doing, by participating, you are writing things down in an organized fashion. So let's get started. Um, when determining the preliminary plan dimensions of a spread footing that's supporting a column force, engineers typically use the soil's allowable bearing capacity, which we often call Q allow. The soil's allowable bearing capacity must be greater than or equal to the applied bearing pressure from the column force. And so setting up this relationship by saying the allowable, allowable bearing capacity Q allow is greater than or equal to the applied bearing pressure from a column force, we can rearrange some of the governing equations and solve for the preliminary plan dimensions of the spread footing we are interested in. So the first thing we want to uh, discuss before we actually get into a numerical example are the units. So units are very important here. The units for allowable bearing capacity, which we're going to call again Q allow, has units of stress. Okay, and if you remember from um, some of your classes, this triple equal sign is the mathematical symbol for the phrase has units of. So how about we write that down? This little symbol means has units of stress. Now, if you remember, what is what are the units of stress? Well, units of stress is uh, comes from force divided by an area okay so um, i'm assuming in this video you you are familiar with the units of stress force divided by area so in english units that would be things like pounds per square foot or we abbreviate that as psf you could have kips per square foot abbreviated as ksf you could even have tons per square foot, which is abbreviated as TSF. So all of those are examples of units of stress in English units. In SI units, and you know, for, for folks outside of the United States that typically use SI units, the base unit for SI units is what? Maybe pause the video and think about it because I'm about to tell you. It is a Pascal. A Pascal is a Newton per meter squared. And of course you have, if you're using SI units, you also have all of the SI prefixes that you should be familiar with. For example, you can have kilo Pascals, which is a kilo Newton per meter squared, which means it's a thousand Newtons per meter squared. You also have the other prefixes you could encounter like mega Pascals, giga for giga Pascals, so on and so forth. So I'm assuming you're pretty comfortable with that. So I'm not gonna go into any more detail on, on that topic. Topic. So um, mathematically, again, the allowable bearing capacity, Q allowable, uh, should be greater than or equal to the applied bearing pressure. Of course, bearing pressure, pressure is the same thing as, is, uh, has the same units as stress. So your applied bearing pressure also has units of, of stress units like we just talked about. So if we call sigma is the applied bearing pressure, then we're saying that Q allowable must be greater than or equal to sigma, okay? Um, so that's our basic relationship. Now graphically and, and visually, what would this look like? Well, let's draw a, a quick figure of a spread footing that is embedded into the soil. And let's say that this is our column force. We can call that F call for column force. And um, we're gonna say that when this force from a column 
is is uh, induced into this foundation and the foundation is supporting that force then what happens is beneath the foundation we develop this bearing pressure and if everything is concentric which means lying along the center line of the foundation and the column then we're going to have a uniform bearing pressure a uniform applied bearing pressure sigma okay so again we are going to make some notes here we're going to say f column is concentric and that will give us sigma is a uniform bearing pressure that develops at the base of the footing, okay? Um, now, uh, the footing is gonna have a plan area, okay? So I'm gonna put a little note here in purple. We're gonna call this plan area, all right? So again, this, is, this particular figure is what we call a profile view, all right? And if you watched one of the previous videos, we talked about uh, what a profile view is. Now, let's look at a plan view of this same figure, okay, of this same figure. So if we look at a plan view, then we may have uh, a figure that looks kind of like this. And here is that column in the middle. And this whole area, this whole base area, the whole thing is going to be our plan area in the plan view, okay? So we're going to say that's the plan area, and we can call plan area A, give it a name A, all right? And so that means our column load is coming down into the, the screen or into your paper when you draw this. So this is our plan view here okay and again the plan area it's very important you understand your plan area for these purposes is this entire uh, shaded area that I'm, I'm scribbling in right here okay and your F column is going straight down uh, through there so that's our plan view and let's say we wanted to draw a 3d view okay if we wanted some kind of three-dimensional view it may look something like this Okay, there's the pad, and we're gonna draw some hidden lines here. Just like that. And then our column, our column interface will be somewhere right here with the uh, F column coming down right in the middle, okay? So where would this bearing pressure be in this kind of three-dimensional view? Well, it's gonna be beneath the entire base surface of the footing soil interface. So again, it's a it's got units of stress. We're talking about units of force divided by area. So where is the area that we're interested in? Well, again, it's this base area that's at the footing soil interface. So if I try to label that here, I know I'm, I'm not the most or artistic person, but this is the uh, base area. So this is your area A, the same area or plan area that we discussed earlier. All right. So these are your three, your three uh, viewpoints. And again, in green here, we've got our applied bearing pressure. Now the question is first, how do we calculate this applied bearing pressure from this column force F call? Well, it's as simple as what you've learned in um, mechanics of materials or maybe even statics. Applied bearing pressure sigma is just going to be the column force, which is F call, divided by that plan area or that base area A. So it's just force divided by area, F over A. Again, you've learned this concept hopefully before in a, in a mechanics of materials or, or statics course. And so again, the relationship that we're interested in is 
Q allowable must be bigger than or equal to sigma, okay? Now, what's interesting is what is sigma equal to? Sigma is equal to F column divided by area, all right? So if you want to um, solve or design the plan dimensions, which really come from the plan area, of the base of the footing, you say Q allow is bigger than or equal to F call divided by plan area. And then what can you do? You can rearrange and solve for the plan area. So you can say your area of the base of the footing must be bigger than or equal to F call divided by Q allow. Okay, and then from there, we can use that area we just solved for to calculate required plan dimensions like length and width of that spread footing. Okay, so in our next video, um, we are going to explore a numerical uh, example of this concept. So check out the next video. This is just meant to give this video is meant to give you some background information. But check out our next video right after this one that goes into a numerical example of how to solve for plan area and then plan dimensions. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and keep following our videos and our explorations of this uh, fantastic topic in engineering. Thanks for watching.